Hello Scarlet. You're Black Widow. You're still kind of Black Widow. How the heck did that happen? I met with John Favreau when he was casting Iron Man 2. And we had a really great meeting. He's wonderful. And I was a big fan of the first Iron Man. And I wanted to work with John and Robert. Mm -hmm. And then I did not get the role. And I was, you know, was pretty bummed about that. Uh, happens all the time. And then I fatefully <laughs> was, of several weeks later, the actor that was cast in the role originally was not able to do it because of a scheduling conflict. And so John called me and we met again and I said, I am, yes, I'm extremely available still. What's your name, lady? Rushman, Natalie Rushman. Front and center, come into the church. No, you're seriously not gonna If it pleases her. the court, which it does. It's no problem. I'm sorry, he's very eccentric. If anybody ever asked me about what advice I would have for other actors that are trying to make it, I say every opportunity is an opportunity to, to work and you'll never get a better call than when you thought you lost a job and then you got it. <laughs> Rule number one, never take your eye off your opponent. Oh my God! I was so excited to have like a second chance at it. It's been an incredible, decade of time. I never, at that point, could never have imagined how life-changing all of this would be. I don't think any of us did. Uh, I mean, obviously, John and Robert had a sense of that, but as we collected other Avengers along the way, nobody could have foreseen, other than Kevin Feige, probably what a, what potential this, this whole universe had, this whole cinematic universe had, and uh, it's been been rewarding in so many ways. This is a big question as well, but what do you like most about Black Widow, about uh, Natasha Romanoff? I think the character has a lot of integrity. You know, she's not afraid to admit when she's wrong about something. You're not gonna stop. You know I can't. I'm gonna regret this. Go. She works very well in a team, but she also has leadership qualities. Anyone's making trouble where they shouldn't, comes through me. Okay. She doesn't really have an, an ego um, that gets in the way of her decision making. And she's pragmatic. And I, I, I think it's kind of unexpected. I used to have nothing. I don't know if I describe her as humble exactly. She's not, I mean, she's got, she has a cockiness to her. And then I got this job. But she doesn't have this kind of flawed ego, I think, that sometimes a character that has that power can sometimes feel that way. We're still friends, right? Depends on how hard you hit me. She's not pretentious at all, and I like that about her. Now, <laughs> you've been in eight movies now. This is your ninth, Black Widow, finally. How does it feel to finally be releasing it, and what did you want to say with this movie? This film was a different experience for me because I produced the film, and so was able to carve it out of nothing, really. Before I was an Avenger, I made mistakes. And a lot of enemies. We had a decade of back story and experience and all of that, but because the character is really in a place we've never seen her before, which is without any sort of team or organization around her. And she's alone for the first time in her life, really. And because we didn't have the burden, or what can sometimes feel like a burden, of having to hand off another mm -hmm. storyline or wrap something up. You don't know everything about me. Or answer a whole bunch of questions. We didn't have any of that, which was daunting. The Avengers weren't my first family. I wanted it to feel like there was some sort of closure for audiences. Natasha, my sister, after all this time, what brings you home? And I wanted it to feel different also than all of the other films in the MCU. <clears throat> I wanted it to look different and stand on its own. It still fits. 
Oh my God. And I, I think we accomplish those things with this. I, I really feel that way about it. So it's wonderful for it to be finally coming out. And I also feel like this is the right time for it to come out. We, I don't think we could have made these kinds of decisions 10 years ago. And so it mm -hmm. feels all like it's supposed to happen this way. Could we now discuss your character's death? A soul for a soul. Could you tell me how it evolved on set and what your first reaction was to the news that she would die? Well, I think we all knew there were gonna be some pretty big losses. Whatever it takes. In the Infinity War into Endgame. Whatever it takes. None of us thought we would all be spared. Whatever it takes. And none of us felt like that would be fair either. There had to be some sacrifices. Whatever it takes. So I wasn't surprised when I got the call. Kevin Feige called me, our boss at Marvel. I think he was nervous to tell me and sad about it, saying something along the lines of, you know, we all expected that, you know, there would have to be, like I said, some big sacrifices. Whatever it takes. It, it didn't surprise me that that was a choice that Nat would have made. The last five years, I've been trying to do one thing, get to right here. That's all it's been about, bringing everybody back. No, don't you get all decent on me now. I knew that she had to feel at peace with that decision. You know what I've become. And that she was doing it out of love. Oh, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. Love for, really, for a friend. Maybe you should. You didn't. It had to feel like her, like she was resolved in that in that decision, and that the decision was hers. And that it wasn't something that was happening to her, because mm -hmm. all so much of her life has happened to her. Okay. You win. Shooting that scene. You know, at first, at first, we actually shot it a couple of different times. I found my family, I love them. <laughs> you tell them yourself. I, I wonder actually if out there exists the longer version of the scene, because the first, what, how it was scripted originally was that Thanos' army um, kind of comes, eventually finds us at Vormir and mm -hmm. is like launches this huge attack on the two of us. And basically we are like fighting to get to the edge to make that ultimate sacrifice while also trying to survive long enough to get there. And then I got a call from the Russos and they said, okay, so. <laughs> New idea. We feel we need something like immediate. So the stakes are so high and then it just kind of immediately happens and it it feels like that will be a better more yeah impactful experience for the audience and, and i thought so too let me go no and so we went back and reshot that scene and really made it about the that end moment between nat and clint just the the rush of it it's, it was tough i mean it was emotionally really upsetting <laughs> but also very powerful. Jeremy Renner, who I think is one of the finest actors around, to be able to share that moment with him made it all the more powerful and poignant and really a highlight of my career. It felt like something was happening, like something yeah. was happening. And I yeah. think the scene is iconic because of that. Yeah, let me go. It's so, it's so special. It is so special, so special. And uh, of course, it's hard to, accept it as the final moment in, um, for the character, but it, it makes sense, I think. Clint, where's Nat? I love you in the blooper reels. I absolutely love you. You've, you're the queen of turning to the camera and smiling. Let's get this going. Sometimes there's a wink. I feel like I'm in a Campania. You learn that the batons aren't that easy to swing around. There's a fine art to acting whilst sitting on someone's shoulders. Come on. All the science-y dialogue. What the hell 
was this made out of? Vibranium? I was wondering whether you had a favourite, like, blooper you may have had, because I love it when you and Chris are up close and personal in Winter Soldier and he just can't get the lines out. <laughs> Stop it! Where is it? I didn't do this to you. Nope. Go. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's going on the outtakes. We had this moment, I remember when we were doing Winter Soldier, where we go into this kind of burnt out old whatever bunker thing. Is this the line when you say, Steve, we got a bogey, short rain ballistic, and then you can't get the word out? Oh my gosh, is that it? Oh my gosh, I think it is that moment. Steve, we got a bogey, short range ballistic, thermobaric payload. <laughs> you, you nailed it. I could tell. I cannot <laughs> tell you how many times, I think we had to take a break from shooting because it was like, forget it. Because I'm never going to be able to say this. Steve, we got a bogey, short range ballistic. 30 seconds tops. From Iron Man 2, we, we did additional photography and my line was, bogeys converging on the Oracle Pavilion, lock and load, the fight's coming to you. Try selling that. And I kept saying to John Favreau, I cannot sell this line. It is virtually impossible to sell this line. I was like, you do it. You tell me how to say it. Of course he did it and it was so good. So good. I was like, Go forget it. You get in the cat suit, you do it. All right? Um, just I'll leave you. It up. <laughs> God damn that guy. He can direct, he can act. I hate him. Um, I See that to deal with here? 10 years of this. Let me leave you with these two questions. What have been your most memorable fan interactions? What lines do you get in the street? Do you get people calling you Nats? Do you get people dressed as you? What happens? Now, people just scream Black Widow at me, which is so funny. So you go, oh, yeah, I guess the movie's coming out. You know, they're not screaming out, for instance, the ca my character's name from under the skin. Um, ah. <laughs> they're, screaming, they're screaming Black Widow. What mementos are you keeping throughout your time as Black Widow? What's made at home? Some batons? I have every suit. I have every suit. I think it's actually in my contract. But at this <laughs> point, I don't even know what's in my contract. It's been so long, so I'm just like, don't forget to wrap up my suit. Yeah. I remember when I was doing, event right before I did Avengers, I got a package in the mail from Kevin Feige. And it was my suit, like perfectly packaged in this shield duffel bag that they had made for this gift it was amazing and then this whole stack of comics and it said something and they were all the avengers comics and the note said something like it's time to suit up for your next mission and i was like what this is the best job well, well played kevin <laughs> scarlet thank you have a fantastic rest of your day really appreciate it thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date you can listen to my radio on movies and tv podcast screen time on bbc sounds and you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.